Hey guys, so I wanted to pop on here today. My name is Danielle, I'm from Team Nourish, and I wanted to talk about something that might be a little off brand for me. So I am a certified nutrition counselor and health and wellness coach. So why am I wanting to talk about raising readers? Well, first off, because I think that when you can instill a love of reading in a child, you really are setting them up for success in all areas of their life from, from now until forever. It's been shown in studies that children that love to read turn out to be adults that love to learn, that turn out to be adults that really make massive changes in this world. And so I had put up an Instagram poll uh, about a week ago about do your children love to read and, and just started an online conversation about this. And so that's kind of where this video has come about is because it's something that I feel incredibly passionate about, but it's also something I feel like I can speak to a little bit because I attended a seminar when I was a very young brand new mother and learned some tips and tricks and kind of brushed them off as oh those are silly they don't really do anything either kids love to read or they just don't but then I found that they actually do really there are some things that as a parent you can do to start to start cultivating a love of reading in your children so I just have to share that with you guys right now so made some notes. So if you see me glance down, it's just to keep me on topic. I tend to ramble. If you've watched any of my other IGTV videos, you know, I, I have to hem myself in here a little bit. Okay. So what can you do as, as a mother or as a father, as a parent, grandparent, whoever, who's ever raising the child to really cultivate a love of reading in them? So I'm going to start very much from birth because I truly believe that the sooner you can start this, I mean, shoot, let's take it back to in womb, in uterus, you know, go ahead and start doing this as soon as humanly possible. Obviously, I'm going to talk about some things that you can do as, as your children age that are going to help you with that, but, or that are going to help them. But I want to start with birth and kind of work our way as your children age. So from birth, what you can do is instill a designated scheduled reading time. All children th thrive with structure and routine. So the more that you can provide that to them, the better off they are going to be. The better off you're going to be. Your sanity will be saved, all of the things. So schedule in a reading time. For us, that was before bed. So we always did bath, milk, bed. So as I was nursing my children, I would be reading to them. As a baby, as like an infant infant, it didn't even matter what I was reading. I would read for myself. It didn't matter. A magazine, a book, doesn't matter. You, They just need to hear whatever language you speak, they need to hear it spoken in, in the rhythm and cadence of reading, right? They need to see as they grow and, and develop as babies, you need to have books around that you let them play with. Books can't be something that they are never allowed to touch. Make sure you have age appropriate books. So if they're babies, you know, give them the ones that are waterproof that are, you know, they have the plastic coating on them or the board books or there's all kinds of things out there that you can purchase or you ask for for a gift or find at the Goodwill or the thrift store that you can just have around so that they get used to touching and holding and feeling a book. It's very, very important that books are not off limit to children and to babies. Give them books that are age appropriate, developmentally appropriate for their tactileness, right? Okay, so like I said, have an instilled scheduled set times. Like I said, growing up, my kids, we always did bath, milk, bed. So as, as they became not fed by me, or you know, if you bottle mom, whatever, doesn't matter, just have that book there, be reading to them as they progress into toddlers and their development. You're gonna wanna read to them, sit them on your lap, let them look at the books. Another really great way is to follow along on the page with your finger. Even You're not trying to teach them how to read. It's just, again, you're training their eye to read left to right, top to bottom. So as you're, as you're reading along, you know, you're reading the book to them, you are going through that and allowing them to read, right? Or to, to hear you and their visual processing. The more that you can bring in their ears and their eyes, all of that together is going to continue to cultivate this love of reading in their life, right? So the other thing you can do is audiobooks. You can get them at the library. You can purchase them. You can download the Audible app. There's lots of children's books on Audible. You can do podcasts. But get them used to hearing the dialect and the inflection and someone reading to them, especially as toddlers. They don't need to listen to, you know, 
Disney tunes, or I shouldn't call out Disney, Disney tunes are great, but kids music and kids bop all the time. Let them listen to words, right? And if you do that from when they're really young, they won't know any different. Okay. So again, continue reading books at those consistent times. Even now, my children are seven and five. We still read to them every single night before bed. That's a part of our wind down routine, allowing them to be visually stimulated by lights and sound and noise and all this stuff right up until the moment you expect them to go to bed. It's kind of counterintuitive when you think about it. So it's the same thing for us as adults. It's nice to have that wind down time, start building that into their regular routine. So as they progress into school age, oh, the other thing I wanted to say about to uh, toddlers and preschoolers, read to them signs. When you're at the store, say, oh, buy one, get one 50% off, or ooh, yield, stop. And again, you're, you're getting them to cue into all these things that are going on in the world around them that they're going to one day read to. Okay, so as they develop into school age, some things that you can do to continue that cultivation of of a love of reading or really even a beginning of that. Cause I know that sometimes, you know, maybe you think, Oh, well, my kid's seven, my kid's 10. It doesn't matter anymore. We've missed that window of opportunity. Not at all. Again, one of the, one of the big things that was gifted to me idea wise was read what they want to read. And yes, mamas, I know you don't want to read books about spiders or you don't want to read comic books or you don't want to read books about, bathroom humor or whatever but if they are interested in reading it read it to them let them read it because anything they're going to be able to continue to digest in reading is going to fuel their fire and teach them to want to learn to read okay so not just what you want them to read you also want to get them reading what they want to read part of that for our family is taking a weekly trip to the library it's just something we're out at the grocery store we swing by the library before we go there i set a number of books whether that's three or five or how many ever i feel like i feel like carrying um we set that number of books and then we read them at bedtime and they read them in the car and they look at them and I let them open them and they're not set aside and they're not these precious little things that they, they can't ever touch. Um, don't just talk about letters. So A is for Apple. We want to talk about the sounds of words and I'm not going to get into reading and phonics and all of that. I am not a specialist here. I'm just a mom who is desperately wanting my children to develop a love of reading because I know that I know the doors that literacy opens for them. That if it's not a struggle for you at second grade and third grade and fifth grade and high school and whatever, if it's not a struggle for you to get them to read, learning and school comes so much easier and so I wanted to give you guys a few tips today but talk about the sounds of letters so a is ah and ah and all of these other things and again they're gonna have teachers that go on I am not a homeschool mom I don't educate my children in any way other than just within the walls of our home um, you know after school before school in life parenting that kind of thing but I I We'll make it very clear. I am not a homeschool mom. I'm also not a reading specialist. These are just some tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way that have, I feel like, made a huge difference in us cultivating a love of reading in our children. And last but not least, I know you guys are not going to want to hear me do this or say this, but it starts with you. Mamas and daddies, it starts with you. So if they never see you pick up a book and they never see you pick up a magazine and they never see you read, they aren't going to know. And so that goes, I mean, that kind of wraps back into my whole wellness brand and nutrition brand. But if they don't see you doing it, don't expect them to want to do it just because other people are doing it outside of your home. They need to see you doing it. So again, this doesn't have to be an elitist thing where, oh, it's so nice. She can afford all these things, books, whatever. The library is free. There are thousands of literacy programs online for free. There's all kinds of apps that you can get and download on your phone. They, digital books, Kindles, those kind of thing. Whatever you have, just get them reading words and read the words to them and get them hearing the words. It's going to develop a better sense of learning and a love of learning and just understanding the world around them just gets bigger and broader as they're able to read. So I hope this was helpful for you. Please tag a friend if you think it would be helpful to them. Feel free to share or anything like that, but I hope this was super helpful.